Now, there's some mysterious tunnels that went viral in uh, Crown Heights in Brooklyn. What were these Orthodox Zionists hiding? Take a look. Police make a wild discovery underneath a synagogue in Brooklyn. An illegal tunnel found below the Chabad Lubavitch World Headquarters in Crown Heights. All right, Fox 5's Lisa Evers takes a look at how it was discovered. Nine men are facing charges this afternoon after police say they dug a secret tunnel into the sanctuary of the Chabad Lubavitch headquarters in Brooklyn. The men described by police as extremist students are accused of digging the tunnel so that they would be able to have access to the sanctuary after hours. And when a cement truck was brought in to fill that tunnel, the men stood in the tunnel refusing to leave. The discovery of a secret tunnel eventually led to a massive brawl inside a 100-year-old synagogue in Brooklyn, New York. Known as 770, the synagogue serves one of the largest groups of Hasidic Jews in the world. Now, luckily, no injuries were reported from this brawl, believe it or not. But what the hell sparked it? What is behind the brawl in the first place? What got people so fired up? Well, it was all over the discovery of a tunnel and an attempt by authorities to fill it with cement. So you see a gentleman coming out of that tunnel. This is, this isn't in the Middle East, guys. This is in Brooklyn, okay? This is in Brooklyn. Now, what you might not have saw in that clip that I just showed you was a little disturbing and I'll point out what it is. It's a child's mattress. It's a baby mattress. What were they doing in those tunnels? What were they doing on this mattress to cause this gross stain? And I want to be clear, there's been conflicting reporting on this story. When I was reading about it recently, there were claims that the tunnel was built specifically to skirt COVID orders that closed down religious buildings and that, and that you know people wanted to continue worshiping. And so they needed a secret pathway or passageway into the synagogue. But I don't think that's really what's going on here. So why was the secret tunnel built in the first place? This is where it gets complicated. Yo. Yo. Underground tunnels that- Yo, they Jew fighting cops though. Hasidic Jews are coming what out like rats. You what the fuck? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna, I have to hold on, what? No, no, play it. Wait, hold on. He's coming up. That's like a rat. You know, wait, look, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Hold on. Yeah, they were trying to, so people can understand what they're watching. They built underground tunnels, or like we're carving underground tunnels. Yeah. People found out they were going to fill it up with cement. They had the cement trucks, they would do it. And this is them like protesting and trying to stop them from like tearing down. The, I think they put up cardboard and they're tearing down the cardboard. Like this is their response to it. Yo, let's see, let's see. What the, is, did they have an underground synagogue? No, it was a, a sex child ring. <laughs> No, 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 they are attacking the cops. Bro. Yo, Dude, was it a sex stream? Look at them in the tunnel. What the fuck? Yo, and, oh, I wonder who got the lead in the basement. This is in a basement. What are all those, those pew, that they had chairs and. Hey, um, let's take a tour down to the basement at the bottom of the synagogue. And let's just see what we might find out. I have footage of the tunnels too after this that you can yeah, see. Yeah, let me see. What the hell? This is New York. This is Brooklyn, right? Crown Heights. Yeah. Crown Heights, they're building fucking that's, tunnels. That's literally about six blocks from my house. Go check it out and report back to right? us. Yeah, dude, they are. Crazy. They yeah. are under my home. Legitimately. I'm on the second floor, so they, I, it, you know. Yo. God, I have so much to say. <laughs> Yo. Okay, so show the other tunnels. Show the tunnels. This is wild <clears throat> this is wild son what the fuck yo <sighs> damn let's see whoa 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 oh okay. holy shit they got buckets what the fuck yeah there was like a mattress that got pulled out that's a part of the news because people are saying there's blood on it Ugh. it was full of blood what the fuck what look at the doing? baby. Look at the baby stuff. <laughs> what were they doing down there? It's a trafficking ring. And clear water Is tunnels it? were built. Is it really? Yes. Stairs. Look at this. They were going in. There's baby clothes everywhere. What the 
<laughs> Yo, that shit is crazy. Wow, how far were they going the property down? manager called in and to fix the damage. Not gonna help. They fucked it all up. All of it. Is, is it blocks of tunnels? That's what I want to yeah. know. They- I have tweets here from December of a guy saying, I swear I keep hearing Yiddish under the floor in my New York apartment. I live at ground level and we have no basement. And then a tweet from uh, back in November, him saying, there are Jews living under my apartment. I can hear them like they are digging or something. For the record, I live at ground level. We do not have a basement. And then it's him replying to those tweets saying, I'm not crazy, you all owe me apology. Wow. Hey, damn. Did he call him Vermin though? Did anybody call him? <laughs> no. Uh, I think I've seen some children's cribs and a couple of other. Th- Why would that be at the bottom of a synagogue? Hmm. I don't know. There's just something with children and Zionism. I don't understand what's the obsession with it. Now listen closely to what this Jewish guy said in regards to how situations like this as well as others are handled among their community. This should shed light on why this group was bold enough to physically assault the local law enforcement and not be subjected to the consequences had it been a group of Negroes. Do you think that if someone knows something, if someone's been abused, do you think they should go to the police or do you think they should go to the rabbis first? Try the rabbis first. Why do you say that? Because um, I'm, I'm Jewish and we have our law. This particular synagogue location uh, has some disturbing cases of child abuse that has gone viral and it's been going on in New York City for quite some time. But these stories have been around historically involved around certain synagogues and certain traditions of certain people that might be a bit inhumane. Seeing this baby mattress reminded me of a major child abuse scandal that rocked this community years ago. Take a look at these clips and make a note of each reference from their oral law called the Talmud. He was sexually abused by a trusted teacher and then was shunned by his community as he tried to get justice. And Janine, the teen you're about to meet is the first sex abuse victim from New Square to ever seek justice from the courts. He told me that he has the, the ability to read the palm of my hands. Yossi's life coach started to read other parts of his body. That ritualistic abuse, Yossi says, dragged on three times a week for four agonizing months, each time Taubenfeld ordering him to stay silent. Digging deeper tonight, uh, new concerns about an alleged epidemic of sex abuse being covered up in New York's ultra-Orthodox Hasidic Jewish community. A New York rabbi arrested in Beverly Hills accused of molesting children in Brooklyn. Menachem Tevel, who also goes by the name Mendel Tevel, is a rabbi. During the last year, he's worked here at this Jewish center, JEM, in Beverly Hills, doing outreach work with children and teenagers. And Tuesday, he was arrested here on a warrant from New York accusing him of two counts of criminal sexual acts and one count of sexual abuse. I was seven times a victim of molestation, seven separate molesters. Disturbing allegations are surfacing in a very unexpected place. For centuries, when a Jewish baby boy is born, the ancient ritual of circumcision is performed. But in some ultra-Orthodox communities, religious leaders known as moils also engage in something controversial during the bris. In a practice known as Metzitza Bepe, or just MVP, the moil actually uses his mouth to suck the blood from the infant's penis after he cuts off the foreskin. According to these documents we obtained from the state health department, Rabbi Yitzhak Fisher of Muncie has been tied to at least three herpes infections in babies, one of whom died back in 2004. One of whom died back in 2004. One of whom died back in 2004. Now you can have two, so why not? The answer, as I thought about it, is that it's not as effective because the tube does not seal as well. It's not as pliable. It's not as quick 
and it's not as close. You have to have a quick suction action. There's the theory, some people feel that it is, some people feel that it's not, that the saliva of a human being has some antiseptic qualities. And it's actually brought in the halacha of the Talmud that uh, the saliva of certain people were actually used as curatives. Saliva is not a bad thing. Saliva has elements of cleaning, of antiseptic elements within it. The suction process of the mouth is quicker, more pliable, and it does, and it's and, and it's more exact and, and works much better. 33-year-old Rabbi Yol Malik now accused of preying on three troubled teen boys from a borough park yeshiva for at-risk students. Unlicensed Satmar counselor Nakemya Weberman was sentenced to 103 years in prison for turning a schoolgirl into a sex toy for three years, starting when she was just 12. An episode titled Mexican Cult Murders, broadcasted May 1st, 1989 on the Oprah Winfrey Show. As a child, my next guest was used also in worshiping the devil, participated in human sacrifice rituals, rituals and cannibalism. She says her family has been involved in rituals for generations. She is currently in extensive therapy, suffers from multiple personality disorder, meaning she's blocked out many of the terrifying and painful memories of her childhood. Meet Rachel, who is also in disguise to protect her identity. My next guest treats ritually abused children in her therapist practice. She feels that the problem is much more widespread than any of us can imagine, says there's no doubt in her mind that children and adults that she treats are telling the truth. Tina Grossman, we're glad to have all of you join us here on the show. You come from generations of ritualistic uh, abuse? Um, yes, my family is an extensive family tree and they keep track of who's been involved and who hasn't been involved. And it's gone back to like 1700. And so you were Right. I was born into a family that believes in this. And, and this is a, this is, does everyone else think it's a nice Jewish family? From the outside, you appear to be a nice Jewish girl. Definitely. And you all are worshiping the devil inside the home? Right. There's but. other Jewish families across the country. It's not just my own family. Really? And so who knows about it? Lots of people now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I talked to a police detective in the Chicago area and several of my friends know and I've spoke publicly before. And so when you were brought up in this, this kind of evilness, did you just think it was normal? Um, I blocked out a lot of the memories I had um, because of my multiple personality disorder. But yes, I mean, it's like if you grow up with something, you think it's normal. Mm -hmm. I always thought... So what kinds of things? You don't have to give us the gory details, but what kinds of things went on in the family? Um, well, there would be rituals in which babies would be sacrificed and you would have to, you know... Whose babies? Um, there were people who um, bred babies in our family. No one would know about it. A lot of people were overweight, so you couldn't tell if they were pregnant or not, or they would supposedly go away for a while and then come back. Now, you were telling us earlier uh, that this was th that the practice with the Kilroy death was a religion called Palomayombe, which not all people who practice Palomayombe right. obviously sacrifice. I think what we're looking at is a worship of evil here. Right. Taking normal or standard religions and converting them to the worship of evil. Right. And I just want to emphasize that you don't have to be Caribbean to do it. No, 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 no. 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 Yes. The other thing I want to point out, not all Jewish people sacrifice babies. I mean, no, that's not a very I think we kind of thing. That. <laughs> I just want to point that out. This is the first time I've heard of any Jewish people sacrificing babies. Perhaps this is why there's an Epstein, or there was a Weinstein, or there was just some sort of thing with abuse in children that seems to be quite normal around certain groups of people that are in positions of power. Heck, they even do ritual abuse in certain parts of the film industry, the music industry, and we need to protect our children from that, from those types that might perhaps have been around someone that was abused, the Michael Jackson per se.